Hey guys, Cliff Perch here today with BassResource.com and I want to tell you a little bit about jig fishing in the spring. So the spring fishing, a lot of times that means the spawn. Uh, for bass, it's going to be, it's going to be sometime pre-spawn, a little spawn or post-spawn, but it all is going to revolve around the spawn. So that means they're going to be going shallow, uh, spending most of their time in, in the shallower part of the water column. So uh, I'm going to opt for a flipping jig. Um, Flipping jig, what it what it does for me, it allows me to to fish heavy cover, all kinds of uh, all kinds of bank structure, you know, whether it be a laydown, whether it be a, a dock, toolies, grass, whatever shallow cover you've got, a flipping jig is going to allow me to fish that water column real efficiently. So, uh, uh, some of the basic things that go into my flipping jig. Basically, I, I've got a heavier wire hook. I'm using I'm using heavy line. This this is a uh, spooled up with 65 pound braid. I've got a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. I really don't want them getting a good look at the at the line. You know the flipping jig is not moving real fast, so I like to use that fluorocarbon leader if I've got some visibility. Uh, if it's muddy or really tannic, you can just go straight braid. You know if it, if you don't have much visibility and and you can see I've I've gone to the black blue jig here. That's probably one of the most common colors. Uh, I, I use like a crawdad color and sometimes just a dark black blue color. Black blue is common because of uh, it, it just catches them everywhere in the country. And uh, when it comes to water clarity, black blue is good in, in dirty water, muddy water, tannic water, things that are a little bit more off. Now if I'm going to be fishing some clear water, a lot of times I'm going to want to uh, gear more naturally. I'm going to go towards those green pumpkins, watermelons, browns. Um, I want to match those crowd ads and I want to be kind of close and you know a little trick you can use turn over a few rocks get in those shallows turn over a few rocks look to see what color those crowd ads are uh, that gives me confidence and it helps me to match my jig uh, to what they're used to eating and what they're used to seeing so it looks a little more natural and uh, it, it probably more than anything helps with my confidence I know that I'm throwing what's important uh, I know that I'm close close to that that color combination so so it really helps with my confidence anytime your confidence is high you're going to catch more you're going to fish better you're going to fish cleaner uh, you're going to fish more focused so i want my confidence to be real strong so again that's why i go with 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 kind of knowing what color to throw but uh, uh, more more about the flipping jig itself i'm going with a heavy wire hook i've got all this heavy line on here um, it's it's going to uh, be a little bit more bulky hook, you know, kind of a heavy wire because, uh, you know, when you crack them, your short line, uh, I'm using a flipping stick. This is a Phoenix Super Flipper. It's a 711, so uh, a lot of length, a lot of power. And on a short line, you know, no stretch with the braid, you need a hook that's not going to give when you set the hook. And uh, so, so that's, that's another part that makes it up. I've got a pretty good weed guard on there. Again, I'm going right in the heart of the cover. Uh, whether it's skipping way back under docks, uh, you know, back inside dock poles, or back in the middle of a laydown tree, underneath a willow, uh, you know, I've, I've got that weed guard. Uh, basically, that's going to allow me to fish it through that cover without getting hung up. You get hung up, you've messed up the spot. So anytime you can maximize your opportunities by making perfect shots and getting through the cover, uh, you're gonna you're gonna catch that fish you know every time you flip somewhere you believe that you're gonna catch a fish there so I'm not making any flips that I don't already think there's a good chance of catching one so uh, I want every one of those opportunities uh, to maximize the the chances of, of catching one I want to make sure it comes through the cover well that that big heavy uh, weed guard allows me to get through those limbs and whatever it may be before I get hung up I get that bite so that's how that works um, uh, as far as the head style on my flipping jig, a lot of times I like a real arky style head. Uh, I don't get real tricky with weights. I really like a half ounce if I can get away with it. Occasionally I might go five eighths to get a little deeper, a little faster, and I might go three eighths if it's really, really shallow. But ideally I want to be flipping a half ounce flipping jig. That's my favorite. It's most confident, most comfortable. It gives me a good efficiency with how it falls and the speed. Uh, the efficiency of how I can cover the most water, so I really like half ounce. It's really a, a good uh, good size for me, uh, as long as I can get away with it. Now, if it's real shallow, you're talking about uh, a foot or less, or maybe two feet, 
uh, sometimes sometimes going with a, a 3 8 might be better or if you're trying to use some current you know that might be up against the bank trying to float the current uh, I might use a little lighter jig like a 3 8 ounce and try to get it you know real natural fall but that half ounce really does it for me most of the time I'm gonna get your reactive strike I'm gonna be really efficient in covering the country and uh, it, it works well on my rod. I feel like a half ounce is good for skipping. It's good for long, comfortable, accurate, precise flips. And uh, you know, every time I pitch it around, it's going where I want it to go. So a uh, half ounce is what I want to use most of the time. You know, I vary it with conditions. So if you need to get a little deeper, that five eighths ounce uh, sometimes will help you. You know, if you've got some good clarity, you're, you're, you're flipping a deep sea wall, deeper docks, um, brush piles, stuff like that, you know, I might get a, might go to the 5.8s, but uh, that's, that's kind of the things that I think are important uh, size-wise, weight-wise. As uh, far as my skirt goes, a lot of times I'll hand tie my skirts. Um, if I'm going natural, you know, the browns, green pumpkins, watermelons, uh, I like to use a little bit of living rubber, so I, I tie some brown living rubber on there. I might use some color accents with a little bit of watermelon silicone, uh, maybe a couple of orange strands to, to get some pop. You know, a lot of, a lot of crawfish have, a, have orange claws, orange tips, orange tips of their feet, or they might just have, you know, they might just be real orange. You know, there's some places you go in the country where they're, they're really orange or the bottom half of them's orange. So, um, again, that's something that comes from, from looking at what, what the crawdads look like where you're fishing. So, uh, my natural colors, I'm going to go with a little bit, of, little bit of silicone for color accents. Uh, a lot of times I'm going to use some living rubber. I feel like it just gives a little better action. And uh, black and blue, uh, usually I'm just using silicone. Sometimes I'll put some black living rubber in there to get to get that spring, a little bit more spring. Uh, black blue, uh, because of the water conditions I'm usually fishing it in, I don't feel like it's quite as critical because, you know, it's, it's muddy water. It's tannic water. The visibility is less. I'm throwing that black so that they can see it best. So uh, the the natural colors they're going to get the best look at it so i want it to be the prettiest as possible so silicone a lot of times when i'm black blue um, living rubber when i'm going for those natural colors so um, as far as the jig trailers i use i really uh i really like to use the the ramtail craw from big bite baits it's uh it's a new one um, it's made out of the sensation soft plastics it's got a lot of uh, a strong scent that way um, that doesn't necessarily attract a lot of fish to your bait. You know, I mean, they're really sight feeders. But what it does is, is if they're, if they're, if the bite is light, where you don't feel it right away, they might hang on to it longer. So I like that scent. It's going to give me a little better chance for them to hold on to that bait longer. You know, recognize that bite when it happens. So uh, it's the Sensation Soft Plastics. Again, this is the Ramtail Craw. It's kind of a, a short compact. I want compact. Uh, I want I want that crawdad uh, shape. You know what I mean? When when I was a, a, a kid, live bait fishing, we we would catch crawdads and live bait fish. The best crawdads to use were the little ones. You know, you you uh, you would wait a long time to get a bite on a cr big crawdad. So uh, when I was a kid, I learned that that those small medium-sized crawdads were the ones they they really liked to eat the most. I don't know if it's because of the claws, because of the shell gets so hard but uh, that's why I like the compact. So I'll trim my jig skirt a little bit and the ramtail craw is pretty compact. Um, another thing it does, it's got really good vibration. Super important when I'm uh, in muddy water, dirty water, I can get, get them to feel that bait. You know, bass have a lateral line. Um, they're, gonna, they're gonna feel that a lot of times. So with that vibration, when those legs start to kick, this is designed to have that good kick and vibration. So it's just something else that the bass can hone in on the bait with. So uh, uh, it's got good vibration. And uh, you know, I think that's, that's basically the gist of my flipping jigs. Uh, as far as where I'm gonna fish in the spring, I'm looking for the, the places where the fish are, are going to go spawn. So uh, if I've had really warm weather, I'm going to look towards the backs. I'm going to look towards those flats, places where they spawn. If it's if it's a little bit uh, been cold and they're just starting to move in, I might look around the mouths of, of creeks, mouths of coves, cuts uh, for that cover that's on its way in. Maybe on a secondary point, 
maybe on its way in somewhere. Like I said, if it's, if it's been warm a long time, they're probably going to be further along, so I might go a little further back. Uh, same goes with kind of the post, the last end of the spawn. Uh, I might start looking out a little bit, but, but you get those bites as you're practicing, as you're fishing. Each bite gives you a little bit of evidence. So, you know, I, hey, I'm getting bit in the back of everyone or two thirds of the way back or, or all of them are coming near the mouth. Well, once you get a little bit of that evidence, then you can kind of keep patterning those fish, going, going from spot to spot, fishing the right cover, maximizing your time. And uh, uh, again, that's, that's, just, that's just the best way to fish is to use that evidence to maximize your time, put the jig uh, the places that are most likely to get bit. So that's a couple of my flipping jig uh, tips. Uh, as far as my presentation, a lot of times, a lot of times I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a hop or a slow lift, they might bite it on the fall. Anytime you feel them, I just go ahead and crack them. I don't wait long on the jig. You know, once they get it in their mouth, they've got it. That's the beauty about fishing a jig, really good hookup ratio and really good landing ratio. So once they get it, you feel that tick, I'm just gonna go ahead and blast them. And on my flipping stick, that means a full on hook set. You know, that's the, that's the historic haul back and whack them type of hook set. So uh, flipping jig, I'm gonna use a strong hook set. So. Uh, I feel like that covers it for the flipping jig. You know, there's a lot of other little intricacies about it, but again, spring fishing, I'm gonna look shallow. Uh, flipping jig is gonna target those bass that are uh, eating crawdads, eating bluegills. A lot of that stuff that they're starting to feed up for the spawn and the stuff that they uh, eat around that shallow cover that they get around. That's gonna be the way I'm gonna go and uh, I hope you catch them and good luck flipping.